Welcome to another fabulous episode of My Orgasmic Life. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Gaia Morissette. And today's episode is brought to you by Tickle.life. <laughs> okay, so this is very exciting. Um, you know, I have not smoked uh, for a while now. <laughs> Yay me. <laughs> So let's see, today's the 11th, I quit smoking on July 4th, so uh, that's, ooh, that's uh, almost 40 days without a uh, cigarette, so yay. So I want to talk to you about some of the tools and the behaviors that I have found have been really successful for me and helping me not only not smoke, but also not crave it and not just like white knuckle it through those those craving moments so first of all you know i've done a bunch of shows of the journey around whether we're talking about quitting smoking whether we're talking about any kind of addictive personality any kind of uh, behavior long-term behavior change that we want to have i've done a whole bunch of shows ar around that so please go listen to those um, because there's really important pieces in in each one of those today's show i really want to focus on the actions that i changed and why I change those. And often what happens when we are trying to break a habit um, is we need to replace that habit with something that serves us better. Um, so there's no point in quitting smoking if you're just going to become addicted to Skittles. <laughs> Like, because that's, I mean, on one hand, you're not smoking. On the other hand, you're now, you know, you know, consuming large amounts of sugar, <laughs> refined sugar, which is also uh, just as addictive. They say actually even more addictive. So it's really important, a couple of different things. When I was trying to figure out, okay, why, why do I smoke? What is the motivator? Why am I smoking in this moment? Um, so that was the first question. So this is the why I started going on this adventure. All right. So the first question was, why do I want to smoke right now? Every time a craving would come on, what is it that I would like? Why do I want to smoke? So there's certain things that I did when I smoked. In between sessions with clients, I would go have a smoke. When I was lounging uh, at the nudist resort, I smoked a lot. When I was having bonfires, I would smoke a lot. Um, when I needed a break from work, I would go have a smoke break. So these were like the main, main places where I found that I really smoked a lot. It was a big part of the experience. Oh, and talking on the phone in a social setting, like so when I'm, you know, socializing, I was on the phone, I would go outside and I would have a smoke and I would smoke while I was on the phone. It was like this social experience. So each one of those things, I had to come up with something new, something that would replace that, would give me the thing that I was really craving um, without the nicotine and the cigarette. So I, I came up with some ingenious things. Some worked, some didn't work. <laughs> Some are still a work in progress, right? Um, so I want to share those with you. And again, I think it's so, 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 so important that when you're doing a behavioral change, a habit change, whether that's like a lifestyle change, food change, exercise regime, like whatever it is, you want to make sure that you replace whatever you're letting go of with something that's going to serve you better. Doesn't make it right or wrong, no judgment here. It's just about what will serve you better. So let's start with, um, so I, I did a little episode already about like in the beginning, when I first started quit, when I first quit, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna use cock sucking. That's right, cock sucking. <laughs> that will distract me. And it worked, it was great. It gave me my oral fixation. <laughs> And my oral needs 
as well as the biochemical response that was happening of the arousal response that was going on, which, you know, offset what I would get from taking your drag off the cigarette. So that worked well for the first little while. However, there wasn't always a penis around every time I craved, every time I craved a smoke. So I was like, okay, I need a new, new strategy. <laughs> then I moved to peas. Peas worked really well. It was good for my body, um, like peas in a pot, right? So, um, but however, in Canada, um, our, in Ontario, our pea season is really short. It's like a two, three week season, uh, period. So then I ran out of peas. So I was like, oh, okay, I need to, I need to find some other solutions. So here's, here's one solution. So first, how do I want to put this? Okay. So let's talk about the pieces of how did I, every time I wanted to go outside and get some and go have a, a break, right? So a break from work, a break, just being outside. And so when I would normally crave, that's when I was the biggest craving. So I was like, why am I craving? It's like, oh, I want to be outside because I didn't smoke in the house and I didn't smoke indoors. So I only smoked outside. So it was my out, uh, outside nature time a lot of times. So I was like, okay, well, how can we replace that? So I started having fresh air breaks. So I would be, I would crave a smoke and I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go have a fresh air break. I would get all my stuff together as if I was going to go outside, I'd go outside and I'd go and I would do 10 deep breaths as if I was taking a drag off a of smoke. So that breathing would look very much like, and if I needed to, I might even put my hand, depending how, how intense the craving was, I might even put my hands as if I was pretending like I was holding a cigarette and put my fingers to my mouth to take a deep drag in and exhale. And I would do 10 of those. Surprisingly, that seemed to like, I felt satisfied. I got this deep relaxation breathing. I got to be outside in nature and that really curbed my cravings. So now when I really crave that, I'll check in. I'll be like, okay, what's going on? And I'll be like, oh, I haven't been outside. I need, an out I need a fresh air break. And I'll go and I'll do that. So that was really helpful. I found that, that, that one I still use. Orgasm, obviously, uh, you know, going and whacking off. Uh, that was really beneficial, um, still is sometimes, depending on, I tend to use, I tend to pull, pull out orgasms, sex, oral sex now um, as the big guns, <laughs> literally and figuratively, um, <laughs> when I'm like really, really, really craving and I've done all of my other tools and I just can't seem to like curb the craving that's I, I utilize that I, I, I save that one <laughs> all right um okay the next one is the lounging piece and so lounging outside all day that's and you know especially out at the nudist resort that's where I would do a lot of smoking and so what I found has been I have a couple of different things that help me um I play my video game while I'm out there. When I feel like I want to have a cigarette while I'm in the lounger, I'll pull out my video game. Uh, coloring also will help to distract me because I'm doing something with my hands. So I'll do some coloring while I'm out at the lounging. Uh, what else? Um, I have like cherries or seeds that I can eat um, that are you know good for my body and gives me something to do with my hands and my mouth. Uh, that's some some of the other ways that are uh, helpful. Uh, I have a, a fancy drink, so uh, whether that's a smoothie, whether that's some gourmet tea that I've made that's iced, um, you know, and I drink it in my outdoor mug. So, you know, no bugs get into it, but that also putting something in my mouth and consuming something helps with the, the craving and the oral fixation. Um, and sometimes the, this is usually where I find the most intensity of the cravings happen is when I'm usually lounging. Um, and so then I might even have to leave lounging. Like if I, if I can't 
if none of those tools are working for me then and I still want to have a smoke and I'm not really present and I'm not really enjoying the lounging and I'm not really being in the thing, then I might need to go do something. So I might go have a bath, read a book, um, have a nap, um, you know, uh, have some sex time, um, you know, whatever I need to do to distract me to not craving. So that I think is probably the hardest, one of the hardest pieces for me still. Um, and eventually I'm sure that, you know, that won't be a thing anymore. Okay. So we covered lounging breaks. Uh, okay. Fire, the fire, the fire has been a, been a very fascinating and interesting one. <laughs> so again, what is it about the fire? Like, why do I need to smoke around a fire? Um, you know, and so I asked the question, like, what is this? What, why do I want to smoke around the fire? Um, one is habit, but two, like, what else is there? Well, when I was a kid, um, my mother had a very interesting relationship with smoking. So sometimes she smoked, but most of the time she didn't smoke. Um, but one of the times that she consistently smoked was when we went camping. And I remember her making these tinfoil, um, ashtrays and you know she would smoke around the fire she would smoke while we played games while we we're camping she'd smoke while we had this bonding time so so this was like so the fire is about this interactive bonding experience and my experience with that as a small kid was that you smoked while you bonded that's what, that's what my mother did so that's that must be what you do and so I integrated that into my smoking career <laughs> You know, for the 33 years that I smoked, that's how I moved with it. It was like smoking was a bonding experience. Smoking was a time when we socialize, and that's when you, you smoke. So the first couple fires were really rough. Um, I was like, okay, so I'm going to keep myself busy. So the first fire... I, uh, you know, we roasted some wieners, which was great. And then, you know, I have like these jumbo marshmallows that I usually eat. And I usually only have one because if you have more than one marshmallow, it makes your stomach feel very sick. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> so the first, the first fire I roasted, so I roasted one marshmallow, but then I'm like, oh, I want to smoke, I want to smoke, I want to smoke, and so I was like, oh, no, no, so I was like, okay, I'll roast another marshmallow, so I roasted a second marshmallow, and then I ate that marshmallow, and then I'm like, oh, I want smoke, I want to smoke, I want to smoke, so I was like, okay, I'll roast another marshmallow, and, you know, because while I was fascinating, because while I was roasting the marshmallow, I was preoccupied I wasn't I was worried I was making sure I was concentrating on you know getting the perfect golden brown marshmallow that was you know even kicked and melted evenly through and and not on fire and like there's a lot of you know there's there's a lot of skill set that goes into creating the perfect marshmallow perfect roasted marshmallow so I didn't have to worry about like smoking like, that was this not important However, I had a very bad bellyache. I was very, very sick. I did not, oh, it was not a good plan. So I was like, okay, let's try something new. So the next fire I have, I'm like, okay, what if I cook over the fire? Like that'll give me like a long period of time of being like concentrating on something other than, you know, you know, wanting to have a cigarette. So I'm like, all right, I'll cook over the fire. So my partner, you know, he made up the fire and, and uh, you know, and so, and we hadn't used the grill on our fire pit uh, in a very, very long time. And so there was all these variables. And so um, needless to say, uh, it was quite hectic. The burgers, half of them were burnt, half of them were raw. <laughs> Half of them fell into the fire. <laughs> the fire, the, the girl didn't really sit on things. So I had to, you know, I had to like jimmy up a, a log to even it out. And, and because I have all sorts of allergies, I'm allergic to dairy and gluten. Um, There's two different kinds of burgers on the, the grill, one that my partner could have and, you know, my special ones that were gluten-free, dairy-free, happy, uh, you know, grass-fed, <laughs> organic, um, you know 
um, burgers. So I had two, two spatulas, keeping them separate, flames going everywhere. And so it, it was, it was great for adrenaline production. Um, you know, cause I am a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. So, you know, that was good. Um, but it didn't really give the feel of like, oh, this is a nice, relaxing, zen fire, which is why I'm having a fire is for this nice zen experience. So I'm like, all right, well, I didn't work. All right, fail. We got to come up with something new. All right. So I'm like, all right, <sighs> what can I do? What can I do? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go collect sticks. <laughs> this will give me something to do. And it was like, in this moment, I was like, oh, that's why people are always playing with the fire. They're always like playing with the fire, adding stuff to the fire. And I was like, leave the fire be, let it, let it be. And now I understood why. So I went and I would collect all of my sticks. I put this big bundle of sticks all over the lawn and all over the yard. And, and, and then I would put the sticks next to my chair. And every time I wanted to have, I had the craving of wanting to have a smoke, I would pick up a stick. And I would, because I'm magical, I would also put in my intention. So I would put in, I would put into the stick what I wanted to let go of, right? So um, I want to let go of this craving of smoking, which was a popular one. Um, <laughs> so I would then throw it in the fire and then wait for it to catch on fire. And then it would catch on fire and then I would watch it and that would entertain me until the next time. And then I'd throw another stick in. And that seems to actually work really, really well. And because lately when I've been having a fire, I have my sticks and I don't really crave, I'm not craving smoking. And so it's like quite nice. So it's not just like, again, it's this whole piece of finding the thing that will replace what it is that you were getting from the experience. And I'm enjoying the interaction around talking about what I'm putting into the fire of the stick. I enjoy the collection of the sticks. I enjoy watching them burn. Um, you know, it's like there's this, this whole thing around that. And so it's really interesting that I was invited to do a social distancing fire at friends of ours. And I didn't bring any of my sticks. I didn't collect sticks because I thought mm, it would be rude to, um, you know, mess with somebody else's fire and the moral of that story is one I didn't smoke I still didn't smoke but the whole time I was craving it like I was very much craving craving the whole fire even though I had got to spend time with friends that I haven't seen in a very long time the whole time I was like oh don't smoke don't smoke don't smoke I want to smoke oh don't smoke, 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 smoke. the moral of the story is ask for what you need um, my friends would have been more, I'm sure would have been more than okay if I had said, okay, so I have this thing that I do um, that has helped me with quitting smoking. Um, and are you okay with me throwing sticks in your fire? It could have solved that and I could have enjoyed the experience, but I didn't because I was like, well, that seems stupid. And, and what are people going to think of me and all those kind of things. So I ruined my own fire by not like in my own fire experience by not asking for what I need. So that's another important like little tip here is that when you find something that works for you, whether it's silly, seems silly or ridiculous to other people, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you need to do for you. Okay. All right. So that's the fire. Uh, oh, talking on the phone. So talking on the phone, I have a couple of different things. Uh, I drink things out of fancy glasses. <laughs> I make tea while I'm talking on the phone. So I have something to, tea is a very social thing um, for me. Uh, let's see, I, like I said, drink things out of fancy glasses. So I have these beautiful wine goblets that, clay wine goblets that I made back in the day when I was a professional potter. Uh, that's what I used to do. And uh, so I drink out of them. Uh, what else? Uh, yesterday was the first time that I actually was like, okay, I'm going to brave it. I'm going to take the phone outside. I'm going to go outside, have a conversation with my girlfriend in the same spot that would normally be my smoking spot, used to be my smoke, smoking spot. And I'm going to drink, you know, fancy tea and see how it goes. And it was pretty good. It was pretty good. 
I had a couple of moments of wanting to light up and then I would just drink um, my fancy tea. So that was good. So yay me. Um, and then the, the one that I still am working on, I'm still a work in progress, is in between clients. Um, so this week, so I was talking to a friend of mine and we came up with some strategies. And so these are the strategies that I haven't had a chance to try. Um, I haven't seen any clients since I came up with those strategies. So uh, today I see clients later on in the day. So we'll test it out and then I'll give you, I'll give you some updates on it. But the plan is, is that after I see a client, I'm going to go do some primal drumming or dance like some real primal dancing um i need there's a piece around um holding space for other people which i love doing like i absolutely love doing but it also is a lot of energy and i have to i have to be just the vehicle and the conduit for um, my clients and i don't get to be me and, and that's important, that's, that's the whole point. Um, it's not about me, it's about my clients. But um, what I used to use smoking in between, I used to use this as a decompression. So it would decompress um, by the, my deep breathing, but it would also, the nicotine would give me a hit of calming my nervous system down. That was on high alert in order to hold space for my clients. So um, I'm hoping that doing some primal dream, drumming will help that release and reset my nervous system. Doing some, you know, primal dancing will, you know, give me the same fix because the fresh air break doesn't give me the, the deep breathing doesn't give me the same fix because there's the missing of the nicotine. So I need to do something to create some endorphins to flow through my body to give me the fix to reset my nervous system. So that's what I'm working on this week. Um, I'll give you the heads to see how that works. Um, if anybody has any like great suggestions on something that I can do in be quickly um, in between clients um, to do a reset of my nervous system, taking a deep breath, um, but also physically releasing um, out of my body, um, you know, please send me a you know, private message. Um, that would be great. I've also used orgasm um, that also works a little whack off break also works as well, but you know, I don't, I know I'm going to say something that like people are like, what? <laughs> you said what? Um, sometimes I don't always want to have an orgasm. <laughs> I know. I can't even believe it came out of my mouth. <laughs> So those are the tools. Those are the tools of the major things. And again, each piece of that is like, well, what, why did I, what is it that I need? What is, why did I want to do this right now? Why do I want to smoke? What's the, what's the real reason that, what's the, what's the need that I'm getting met? And then how can I come up with some ingenious, creative ways to get that need met without putting, uh, without doing that behavior, which for me, it was smoking. And for the most part, I don't have a lot of like cravings where I'm just white knuckling it through. For the most part, I'm at this place where I'm like, oh, that's a thing I used to do. I'm not a smoker anymore. Um, and so it's quite, it's what's working. It's completely working. Um, let's see, what else did I do? Oh, I wrote a list of all the things. Oh, there's a lot of things I tried that didn't work. So um, smudging. So I thought maybe burning things, lighting things on fire would help me. Um, that didn't help like in during the day or when I was talking on the phone or um, my before I found my fresh air breaks. Uh, lighting a candle so then I could blow it out when I was talking on the phone. That didn't really work either. Um, I did a lot of stuff, support stuff. So this is really important too, like 
my body has gone through some pretty crazy detox and it's still going through some pretty crazy detox. Like I, I'm still getting pimples. I'm still getting hives every once in a while. Um, my temperature regulation is not uh, working very well. Um, I have a hard time sleeping. I'm still sleeping. It's not my friend. Um, those are still some of the detox pieces. Um, my body still is kind of sore and achy and stuff. So there's some, you know, my body is really detoxing. It's like each level and layer um, that, let's be honest, I mean, 33 years of putting, you know, tobacco into my system, that's going to take a little while to get out of my system completely and for everything to course correct. So, but there's some things that I have done to help. So the one problem is my metabolism is slowed down, which is what happens when we quit smoking. And I knew that was going to happen. So I made sure before I even started the concept of quitting smoking that I got my carbs and my eating under control so that I was only eating whole food, basically, um, real food, whole food, uh, fruits, vegetables, and meat. Um, and so that I took out, you know, I took out most refined sugar other than, you know, my, oh, I forgot about the marshmallow story. Sorry. So the solution to the marshmallows is I got baby marshmallows. <laughs> Before I can roast more of them and eat more of them without giving myself belly. Okay. Um, so other than my like marshmallow, when I give, have a fire, um, I've taken out refined sugar. I've taken all these things out of my system so that um, when I was putting food into my mouth while I was quitting smoking and knowing that my metabolism was going to slow down, that it wouldn't be, I wouldn't explode and gain a lot of weight. However, I do have a lazy thyroid, and so I've had to kickstart my thyroid because my metabolism is slowed down, um, and I've had to take a bunch of new supplements to kind of kickstart my uh, metabolism again, um, and some supplements to help with my uh, emotional, mental well-being, um, especially in the early phases where I was a total bitch. <laughs> very angry, very angry. <laughs> which is why you didn't see me for those two weeks. Um, so that's, that's been a big part of my, you know, helping with my detox. And then also having lots and lots and lots of Epsom salts baths. That's been really, really helpful. And um, also doing spa days. So because I have clay, um, I've mixed clay with chamomile, um, and I put that on my body if my, if I'm having hives and stuff, skin stuff happening, um, is part of still my detoxing going on. Um, that really draws things out, really helps. Um, plus I love getting dirty, so I get to roll around in the mud and, you know, being out at the nudist resort is fabulous. So I get to be outside naked, covered in mud. It's like ideally awesome. Like it's probably one of the most amazing things for me to make me happy in the world. Anyway, so that has really helped. And then I let it dry. It pulls out stuff. And then um, because, you know, clay is really uh, drying. What I then do is I put uh, coconut oil and sea salt scrub and scrub my skin and that really seems to be helping with the, the skin agitation and the skin irritation stuff so those are the things and lots and lots and lots and lots of water with lemon um, for my ph balance um, so that's and ginger water and ginger tea um, that's been really helpful too so flush everything out okay so there you go. Those are all the things. Those are all the things that I've used. Those are all the things that have worked, haven't worked, that have helped me through this process. I really wanted to give you all the real truth of, of this journey for me um, because it's a big deal. Um, changing behaviors and changing patterns and changing addiction, especially behaviors that have addiction attached to them, um, because you're getting uh, chemicals produced in your body, um, it's not easy to do. 
uh, and there's a lot of moving pieces and there's a lot of layers that need to be addressed. There needs to be what's the physical side of things. What support are you doing now physically? What's the psychological side of things? Um, why did you, you need to figure out why you started the behavior in the first place um, and heal whatever wounds that is so that you can reprogram um, to create the new what serves you better now. Um, that's a big piece of the lasting of why. So when I want to smoke, this is what happens. This is why I haven't fallen off the wagon once. I haven't fallen off the wagon once because I did the work, the prep work beforehand. I looked at why I wanted, why did I start smoking? What was the motivator behind it? I healed on a deep cognitive level using all of my, you know, amazing subconscious mind tools that I have at my disposal and that I've developed and teach and facilitate. And so if you're like, oh, I want to learn more about that, you can find that information in the show notes, okay? Um, I'm, I'm teaching a course on trauma recovery and these tools, subconscious mind mastery is in all of these tools are in that uh, course. So FYI. All right, where was I? Oh, so you want to do the cognitive rewiring, the mindset rewiring piece before you even start the, the dealing with the, the, the physical addiction to the thing. So that what happens is that when you clear that, when you heal that, when you work through that, whatever that is, and for everybody, it'll be different. Um, so now when I have the physical craving, so I'm at this point where not a lot of it is actual physical anymore. Now it's mental. So like now it's mindset stuff. So, but when then you have the physical craving, you can be like, yeah, but I don't, smoking doesn't really serve me anymore, which is just truth. It didn't serve me anymore. It served me at one point. I've changed the belief system. It, no longer, we don't need to smoke. So it helps to like, now I just have to deal with the physical craving and move through whatever that is. I don't have to deal with all of the things, but smoking makes you cool and people won't like you if you don't smoke and blah, 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 blah. And all of the stuff, like all of the pieces. So all I had to deal with was, all right, here's the physical craving. All right. Distract myself, do some other things, give myself something else, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then we have the behavior, which is the habit. So I usually do this, is what I do this thing and then I do this thing. And while I'm doing that thing, I smoke. While I do that thing, I smoke. While I do this thing, I smoke. So then it's changing. While I do this thing, I do something else. While I do this thing, I do this thing, this new thing, right? And giving yourself something new. But again, you're not fighting. At that point, you're not fighting with the whole purpose of the whole reason why you started the addiction in the first place, because that's been healed. So I'm not struggling with those pieces. There's no part of me anymore. That's like, Oh, I'm going to become a smoker again. I want to be a smoker again. I don't, I don't feel that. I don't, I don't even think that I'm just like, Oh, I really would have love to have a smoke right now because this is how I usually deal with this. It's not about, the the real core issue that I've why I started in the first place anymore. So those are the big those are the big threes. It's like, why did you start? Like what did what did it serve? Dealing with the physical side of things and then dealing with the behavioral side of things and just changing those patterns and creating new patterns. And that can be done with everything. So, you need any support? I'm back to work now. <laughs> I'm no longer bitchy. <laughs> Which makes all my clients very happy. <laughs> so, uh, you can reach out to me at succulentliving.com for all your sexual wellness needs, for all your BDSM needs. You can reach me at empressgaia.com. And don't forget to follow the podcast, My Orgasmic Life. If you're looking for another interesting podcast, I'm the host of Tickle.Life's podcast. So that's also a very cool podcast. And then lastly, and this is uh, interesting, I lovingly invite you um, to help 
support the overall costs of running this podcast by joining Patreon. And there's a lot of, I've created a lot of bonuses for you and great content. So you're getting all this cool extra stuff that only Patreon, only my Patreon people get from me and ways engaging me and interacting with me. But let's be honest, like taking the time to create this podcast is time consuming and also leave financially expensive. And so if you enjoy this, if you're getting great value out of what I show up for you guys, then please support me in return. Okay. All right. That's it. That's all. I love you. I'll see you uh, on the next episode. Bye-bye.